we're hiking at Beaver Falls. Get Clash and I, Oregon. That would be fun too. But anyway, we're going on a little hike. And today's focus, we're going to talk about the 10 essentials. So keep watching. So the first time I hiked this trail was several years ago. My youngest son was probably around two and uh, we didn't have a hiking pack, uh, water, um, first aid kit, we didn't have anything. And this trail, this Beaver Falls trail is only like 0.6 miles to the falls and then back. So go, go down the street. Um, so we didn't take anything with us, which was fine, um, until we had an accident, and that was not fine. So what happened was, is we thought we were on the trail, and it seemed like a well-established trail for a while, and then pretty soon it started to go kind of down a cliff, and it was pretty gravelly, and it didn't really feel like that should be the trail, kind of gut feeling was telling me that. But it didn't, we had seen no other trail. So we we're like, I guess. So I went down with one of the kids and shimmied down and we had got most of the way down. And then, then the next group of kids were gonna come uh, with the other adult that was with us. And what happened was, is the person that was with me, she hollered, hey Jess, look out. And I looked up and I could just see this huge boulder rolling down the hill towards me. And I had no time to react and somewhere up above a boulder had let loose and it hit me in the back uh or it hit me <clears throat> let's see how did it hit me because i was facing forward i was trying to get out of the way it hit me in the back and it flipped me over fortunately the the younger kid that i had with me was on the other side of where the rock came or that child would have died because that rock would have just piled right right into him and it, it anyway so it flipped me over on my back and it hit my leg and I have some pictures that I'll show of those injuries um, but I had no water I had no first aid kit um, I had a kid with me and I was kind of over a, a fairly steep place so fortunately I didn't break anything I was just really bruised up and kind of a little bit of road rash looking <clears throat> and so that lesson taught me um, about the 10 essentials and how important those are to carry on a on a hiking trip um, because you just you don't plan to get hurt and you don't plan to get lost but sometimes things happen that we don't expect so what are the 10 essentials um, you need navigation whether that is um, a map and a compass or a GPS or your phone um, some people use both depending on how in depth of a hike they're going on. Uh, sun protection, I always like to wear a hat and sunglasses. Um, if we're going to be in the sun a lot, then I use, we can use sunscreen is good as well or long sleeve shirts to protect your skin. Um, extra clothing because you never know when the weather is going to change and um, or you get to an area and you stop hiking and you get cold or if you're unexpectedly lost um, you need an extra layer and we recently um, know some people who went on a hike to Mount Hood um, on a Sunday afternoon and they were unprepared with their 10 essentials and they were just going for a fun hike and they were gonna make a loop trail and the trail ended up uh, being washed out in that area and they couldn't find the connecting loop and they ended up getting lost and so they ended up staying out overnight on Mount Hood in the in the cold it snowed on them that night um, the one person we know that was with the group ended up with hypothermia and very cold they were able to build a fire but it was very wet wood and they were not able to stay very warm um, so that's just an example of why the 10 essentials are so important. You don't plan to get lost, trapped, hurt, but sometimes things happen and 
things could have turned out very different for them had they had those basic um, supplies on their hike. Um, some kind of a light is always good, uh, whether it's a headlamp or a flashlight. Um, a first aid kit, basic first aid kit, maybe an ace wrap bandage for a twisted ankle. Um, if you're allergic to bees, make sure you have your EpiPen. Um, you know, there's various things you can put in your first aid kit for hiking. Um, a way to start a fire um, is good. And I did a I did a video on a really cool, simple fire starter that I like to carry with me. Check out this part of this trail here. And I can put that link um, here, but it's using cotton balls and Vaseline, and it's really, um, it just starts right up. It's really awesome. Um, some kind of a knife um, or a way to cut and repair if you need to do so. Extra food and water. Um, I always pack heavy because I have, I've, I'm hiking with kids and one of my, um, one of my kids hardly drinks water at all and we're always trying to encourage her to drink water. Here's another look at what we're hiking through. And my other kid will drink his two liters just gone like no problem and then he's thirsty and drinking out of my hydration bladder so I might not be going very far but I always pack lots of water because my kids drink lots of water as well which is good um, but I always end up packing heavy for our situation and then some kind of a, a emergency shelter whether it's one of those um, uh, emergency blankets or um, for our motorcycle riding I have bought some emergency bivy blankets that I carry and I just transfer them from our bike to my hiking pack when we go on a hike so that um, we, you know, they can use those because uh, between the emergency blankets and then we could probably fit two of our smaller kids in a bivy if we need it overnight, um, we should have everybody covered if we got in an emergency situation. So those are the 10 essentials and I just wanted to talk about that on this hike because this is where I learned my lesson greatly on it doesn't matter how short of a hike it is, please pack what you need to take care if something happens. And um, anyway, so now we'll, we'll enjoy the rest of the hike and catch up with the crew. I'm hiking with some, some of my husband's cousins and uh, one of them is down from Alaska with her kids and so it's a chance for us to get together and have some fun. So we'll kind of check out this trail here and see how the rest of the trellos and catch up and it sounds like I can hear the falls so that's cool I think we're getting pretty close
that's the highway up there. Ah, not, well, not highway, but Beaver Falls Road. Follow the little mountain goat here. Kids are always good at finding their way through things. The adventuresome spirit in them. I'm not exactly where, but along Beaver Falls, up a ways, uh, he had a logging camp. Unfortunately, it was an unsuccessful venture. Um, he had worked for a guy logging, he was able to save his money and uh, buy timberland and then try, he was going to float the logs down the falls, down the river to the Columbia. But what I was able to find, and I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate or not, I haven't been able to talk to individual sources here in Klatskanai, but what I found online was that um, he was unable to get the logs to float down the falls, there was a dam, um, and he had to sell out and moved on to new ventures. But he did become a very successful man. Um, the Benson Bubblers in Portland were named after him. He had the Benson Hotel. Um, he was very uh, involved in the, the Columbia Gorge Highway and the road systems. Um, so he was uh, very generous with the money he earned, and but he did become the wealthy man he set out to be. And so, um, but part of his start and and failure was uh, here in the area of Beaver Falls. And he said he was never fa afraid of the failure of money because um, he could always start again. And so, um, so he just kept trying, and eventually he succeeded. So that was pretty cool. And and. You know, maybe we can take a lesson from that too. You know, when you when you fall, get back up, get back up on your feet and try again. And you never know which time is going to be your successful time in life. So that was kind of a cool lesson I learned from doing my research on him. So I tighten it between my thumbs and then. Karen's making beautiful music in the woods. <laughs> because I can walk up that whole thing without using the rope. Okay. Who's next? Go ahead. Right, so I'm gonna use the rope. <laughs> you're old. <laughs> you're compared, old. To, compared to oh, these youngins. Oh, somebody's pulling me up. Is he pulling her up? Somebody's He's pulling me up. <laughs> hey, let go. Let go of the rope. Is that help? Nope, I got it. Okay. You can just take off your Yeah. 
wet feet. They waited across. No, I want to walk across. I'm going to try this bridge here. Okay. Um, somewhat. I don't want to get my socks wet. recovery. Here Brighton. Can you catch it? Here's another one. Brighton. There you go. That really worked good. Oh, save the day. We didn't have to take socks and shoes off. Well, some of us anyway. Oh, wow. I am you go. There you go. Good job. Oop, that looks a little bit loose. Can you make a big step right on this one? Yeah, good job. Well, it looks like they're taking shoes off, so. Ah, you sound like what? A squirrel? Hmm. Was that a squirrel? Or? Like a yeah, I think that's squirrel. Know. blob, huh? It's inverted. Yeah. Oh, look at these inverted. flowers. Yeah. Instead of exhaling like yeah. I do too, I been exploring Klatskanai and we found the castle and one of the volunteers here is going to explain to us about the history of the castle. The castle was built in 1898 by Thomas Flippin. At the age of 16 he walked from Forest Grove and worked in the lumber industry or logging industry. Uh, he ended up marrying, living with the Elliott family and ended up marrying the Elliott daughter. Um, so they started the house in 1898. They both had lumber claims and um, built the house. Unfortunately, three years after building it, he decided, or they decided to split, which was most unfortunate. She liked living in the logging camps, mm. uh, is the story we heard. Since then, it's been owned by two or three families. In the 30s and 40s, it was a rooming house. Mm. Number of people in town recall living here as children. Oh, really? So, Things were subdivided and there were apartments and there were bathtubs and closets and toilets and closets. So uh, starting two years ago, we started, we got a major grant, 250000 from the Birkenfield Foundation. Um, and we started in all new electrical, new furnace, new water heater, new roof, new plumbing. Uh, new walls, stripped off wallpaper. Some places had five layers of wallpaper. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so it's just been a real project. It's now owned by the Klotzkanai Senior Citizens. Um, and it's our hope that the main floor 
will be open for events and tours. The third floor or upstairs will house the Clatskanai Museum and will also have a room that people can rent out, room bed and, like a bed and bath. I actually will have two rooms that have beds and baths that people can rent out. Uh, the lower level, uh, the basement, which you can enter from this side, uh, has our senior center lunchroom and our Meals on Wheels commercial kitchen. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that underneath the stairs, uh, it looks like it's a moat, and that's because Thomas Flippin felt every man's home should be his castle, so he had a moat and he had turrets. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, you're welcome. Where are you from? Uh, we live on Puget Island. Oh, okay. Not that far away. Yeah, and then we go to church here in Clatskanie. Oh, okay. Where? At uh, the Apostolic Lutheran Church uh -huh. on Beaver Falls. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, we went and hiked Beaver Falls actually today, and then we had some time to kill, so Good. Yeah, come check it out. So, can we go all the way around? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Cool. And did you go up and look in the windows? Not yet. No, we'll have to. You can see we, we started acquiring period antiques rid of some of the stuff that was there before that was a period it was just oh. old okay yeah so cool yeah all right well we'll take a peek then sure thank you you're welcome this window these windows are the only windows you can really see into Beautiful.